Hey everyone, Sly47 here. Today we're going to talk about a question that I get pretty often, some tips and tricks, and maybe a rework that might be needed in the near future. But the question is, is how do I rank up my commander quickly? If I could just send back a gif every time it would be this. That's the neat thing. You don't. So, unfortunately, when you see World of Warships Blitz and you go, oh, grinding up to tier 10 must be the end game, right? A lot of tech to determine that was a lie. No, no, it's not the end game. No, the real true end game is getting your commander up to a level 11 or a level 12, because those skills sometimes can almost be borderline necessary to actually have a good ship in that entire line, especially certain <laughs> legendary commanders, even epic commanders, have skills that are very high up there that all of a sudden take a ship from being mid-tier to being meta. So it's it's definitely something we need to talk about, so I'm going to drop some tips and tricks on how to grind your commander a little bit faster, because of course, we're in the end game now. I'll also cover what actually happens at tier 12 when you actually reach it for your commander, then I will be going over kind of my ideas and fixes of a commander rework, going from a simple, easy slap-on solution to some larger scale ideas that I have done, which of course I will make sure I have timestamps down below, so if you want to skip right to that, you can let me know your comments and thoughts in the comment section down below. Let's get into it. So first up to bat is something I know probably pretty obvious to most people who play the game, but who knows, we might have newer players joining us. Hi, welcome. But to help you rank up your commander a little bit faster, premiums tend to help. And how they exactly help is you are allowed to put a commander as long as it's the same nation, like this, I have my Conqueror commander on my Vanguard. It is HMS, HMS, so basically I can put even my DD commander on my Vanguard if I wanted to and put it on there. Maybe it won't be the right, correct spec for that ship, but at least you'll be working on that commander XP while you're grinding another ship or something like that. Continue pushing up that commander to even higher levels. Also, for the newer players, I would highly suggest picking up tier 7 and 8 premiums over tier 5 and 6 premiums as these generally offer a more playable section of the game. There's a lot more players there, so you're getting the matches quicker. And then, of course, the 5 and 6 you'll most likely be getting eventually from the missions crate that you'll be unlocking as you play this game over time. So unless you specifically really want a tier 5 or 6, you're going to potentially get them for free out of those mission crates if you play often enough. Tier 4, you're really not just getting... You're not, not getting a lot of XP, so tier 7 and 8 is where I would generally stick, especially if you are a newer player. There's a lot of pretty decent, pretty favorably rated premiums around those here, so there's very few that you need to watch out for that you'll basically regret spending money on, so I highly would suggest that. Now, onto the boosters. Some of this seems self-explanatory, but I have a trick that will actually help you get a little bit more XP squeezed out every single time, so you can use your commander boosters little bit more effectively in my opinion so let's talk about them now of course you have your silver boosters you have your Greek boosters we're not worried about that here we're talking about ship xp and commander xp now of course when you look at the commander xp bonuses plus 50 plus 100 plus 250 this seems great these would seem like you would want to stack both of these up and bing bada boom that's gonna be your best net amount wrong actually so disclaimer I have not looked at the math. I have not looked at the code. I cannot explicitly say this exact thing is true 100% of the time, but this is what I have noticed in my recent grindings of so many legendary commanders and new ship commanders and everything. I've been grinding commanders a lot, but yeah. So what you actually want to do is run a commander booster with its equivalent or close to as you can get, because of course some people just don't have these boosters all the time, for just base XP ship boosters. So when you actually look at how the entire ship XP gets transferred out and you get the commander XP out of a certain amount, you notice that the commander XP doesn't always equal the actual XP that you get from your ship. It's kind of a portion of it. But what I have noticed that if you run a commander booster, yes, it increases it, you know, the exact amount, 50, 100, or even 350 if you combine these two. What I have noticed, though, is that if I paired up a ship XP booster with a commander booster, similar to this, 
I have noticed the net gains from this booster goes up far, far, far more than just running straight Commander XP boosters. What I believe is happening is you are increasing that base amount of XP that the Commander XP is taking from. So basically all the calculations happen, you get your ship XP. Then they take a portion of that and send it off to your Commander from that game. What I believe is happening is that because you're increasing your base ship XP, you are now getting more Commander XP. This is from what I've noticed in my tests and just kind of feeling it out for this entire video. Would love to know everyone's opinion on this in the comments section down below, but I've just clearly noticed that I've gotten more Commander Net XP by combining a XP booster and a Commander XP booster on at the exact same time than just running a commander booster or even just boosters alone but i will say this is one thing that kind of is another stipulation though a lot of people don't realize sometimes you can just run xp boosters and that will just give you more commander xp so you don't even need commander boosters for me i have obviously hundreds of xp boosters right here that realistically i don't need or i hardly ever use as i'm kind of basically done with grinding overall for right now as you can tell i'm rich in the corner finally everyone right yay dollar dollar bills y'all <laughs> oh man I'm, I'm gonna be so poor soon i had to buy so much stuff oh but yeah so even if you do not have these commander xp boosters and you happen to have a few extra 20% ship boosters, you know, 35, the 50s, that one, that one, right there. Even if you have these, you can speed up your Commander XP grind just a little bit, even on your premiums. I know you will have to pay money to pull that XP off if you ever decide to do that, but in my opinion, it at least helps you get past on this massive grind that Commanders tend to be, so definitely would suggest it. If you can, run these two together. Oh, if you want to Come on, be nice to me. Do this. There we go. If you can run these two together, it's easily... I've I've seen 5, 7k per game. Which, of course, when you are in that tier 8, 9, 10, 11 range, at least you notice there's a movable like amount in the progress bar. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully these are some good tips and tricks. And if you didn't know, let me know it in the comment section down below. Let me know how you've tested if you have down there in the comment section see what your tips and tricks are for really using these boosters in a more optimal way on to free xp for your commander i will say it's not exactly the best way to use your free xp but i will say it is a way that can help you in certain ways so if you do have excess free xp lying around you don't think you're going to need to bypass a ship in a while if you do need a commander jump started i typically will use free xp to jumpstart my commander to at least level five i know it can be kind of a quick grind but the skills that you get within the first five especially victorious charge and survivalist really help you survive a lot more in games at least in my opinion and or even have another rapid reload to stay alive or you know a little bit better accuracy to land your shots these just really do help and once again it's not exactly hard to get 27,500 free xp out of that it's nothing insane like taking your commander all the way up to level 12 and realizing it's a lot of free xp and a lot of time and effort put into that yeah i, I just wouldn't suggest it now gold that's a lot of money for one commander in this game i would not suggest that either so don't don't do that okay but yeah so you can use free xp for your commanders in order to bump them up just a little bit to jump start them in this game and finally what happens when you actually get to a level 12 commander it's done what can you do with it what is this free commander xp you know mumbo jumbo that you see in the corner because of course when you're younger you don't really notice it well what it allows you to do is do a free reset on that ship or even a free retraining for that commander onto another ship line. So let's say you play tier 10 of a particular ship, but realize it's not exactly lovely, and you want to switch it over to, let's say, a better, more meta ship, like the Malta or the Minotaur. Well, you can take that commander after 
getting enough grinding done and pretty much transfer and respect them completely for free for an entirely another ship line it does take a while but also you are at tier 10 so you're typically getting to 120 or 240,000 for full reset actually pretty quickly so yeah it's it's there when you actually want to do that now let's talk about commanders in general because yeah oh boy okay so i'm gonna use isabel here as an actual reference here because she's missing something keying critical to her entire kit and it's because it's brand new or at least i should say newer in this game than commanders overall so as you can see isabel is on the atlantico pretty much the only ship you'd want to actually put it on has skills at tier 9 and tier 12. So, these are great skills. Perfect for, for her. Absolutely great. Love that. Here's the problem. It's on one ship in this entire game. And by the way, you need to grind about a million XP to get her up. That's a lot of games in one ship. Just one. We're, we're not talking about other lines like, you know, per se, BD over here, which basically I can run on just an enormous amount of potential ships on the entire HMS premium shops and that's really my problem with it and really one of the easiest fixes in my opinion if we could get wargaming one of the first things with commanders commanders actually shouldn't be the end game because especially APCS which is mostly the preferred IFHE is only four exceptions of course is for carriers but overall APCS is a skill that once you get it you will notice a considerable difference in the power of your ship in most situations giant hunter of course helps citadel strike is kind of more of a meme but horizontal protection expert makes your ship just straight up tankier no, obviously not the minotaur but in general there are some higher level skills that help out ship lines dramatically in my opinion, first things first, commanders, their entire grind needs to be cut by at least a fourth of the time. You should be pretty much unlocking your level 12 skill if you went up the entire way, up a grind from tier 1 to tier 10, and potentially if you, you know, use gold to retrain them every single time on each and every ship, which would be expensive, you should be at least at going on... APCS pretty quickly on your tier 10 if not already have it now let's say you're resetting a few times you should at least get to tier 10 maybe just about to unlock tier 9 or at tier 9 just there because I have gotten to tier 10 with a level 8 commander still waiting on getting my level 9 it's just way too much of a grind we're talking a few hundred games still at tier 10 just to unlock skills that could potentially have made that grind so much better. So Wargaming, and I, I really would love to know people. I know some people have talked about a third of the overall removal, which would put it at about, I think it's like around 700k or something of, of experience on your commander, which would definitely be quicker. But I think that they need to cut the grind for commanders greatly because this is a long grind there are there are plenty of rulers of the wave players that do not actually have level 12 commanders on those ships they just it's just they don't it's it's a long long grind for certain ships now let's go back to isabel here because there's a there's a particular ship we need to talk about here particular stuff so you can't buff certain things that aren't on this list here of the details take per se radar now radar is in this little diagram right here but it's only on legendary commanders which i can definitely see one plus radar is incredibly powerful but maybe we should talk about adding in you know secondary overload or maybe even fixing mist weaver to work with you know fuel smoke and or emergency uh engine smoke i believe it's called we definitely need to add more to this if we just want an easy fix so wargaming and i know a lot of people would probably be like hey this is this is the easy fix and such you add an extra secondary overload right there and on marksman you all or on close quarter combat experts probably would be the better one is you add in additional time on your secondary overloads 
that'd be a pretty average fix add in you know certain other things in other areas maybe you can change up the names of certain things if you're not feeling it's quite fitting but i do believe we need to add those newer skills in that have been added to this game and allow for us to spec in for commanders per se like the schlieffen which literally you just like you run the most boring build on the schlieffen because pretty much yeah guess what fire supremacy marksman doesn't help you like eat like adrenaline rush does but there's a lot of other skills in there that it's, you're, you're just grabbing the bl most bland and basic skills you're not really noticing too much of a play style difference when you're playing these newer ships that have these unique skills so wargaming cut the grind a little bit and then of course if if you're feeling you know lovely to us maybe just slap it in until you get a full rework of you know maybe adding in another secondary overload so we can use that get a little cooldown lowering on there on this skill trinkle some stuff in to allow it so that you know engine overload can help out the italian dds a little bit more or mist weaver to actually work with fuel smoke that's been around for years so, yeah so the general overall just let's turn up the grind and let's actually bump up a few things because i don't think a full commander rework is going to be happening anytime soon but i don't think it would be exactly too hard to say hey these skills add in just a little bit extra help for the newer skills that are in this game next up luckily i got this in the calendar before anything happened we got blitz royale so or gaming i'd actually highly suggest something to make blitz royale even relevant because most people don't play it so in my opinion add a commander just chunk boost that you get so let's say you win blitz royale winner winner chicken dinner right you get a nice chunky like 50k commander xp you just get that make it so that blitz royale it's all about commander buffs i would absolutely love that respawn of course is for that hey it's very simple easy grinding you can do it every single time blitz royale let's say that's more focused on commander xp you know let's say it trickles down uh, like every game you get a nice chunk of like 2k if you're in the top you know 12 but if you're in the top four you're in 50k 35k 20k 10k commander xp that way it makes sense for people to actually play blitz royale so there's like hey i'm gonna play blitz royale and specifically work on this commander in order to just finish up that grind make it a little bit quicker if you you know per se want to keep up the same numbers that would be a nice style but obviously balancing will need to occur i'd highly suggest that I think Grand Battle should actually be almost like a containers box area where basically you get a bunch of containers at the end of the game or you get a bunch of blueprints. So that makes sense to be like, hey, I want to do specifically Grand Battles to maybe get blueprints. Love to make all of the game modes in Blitz a little bit more applicable, even if they're maybe not so much fun or needing a little bit of touch ups here and there. But I do believe that Blitz Royale would actually get some good play playtime, especially even for me, if I knew that, hey, if I get in the top four, I'm getting a nice chunky commander boost from that and i think that'd be really enjoyable for the entire play base and maybe even get people to start enjoying blitz rail just, just a little bit though let me know if you want some fixes on that game mode too i do think it could be fun er. now finally i'm gonna shoot for the moon war gaming <laughs> commanders yeah we we need a straight up rework I know those those previous ideas are great, and I think they'd be really good for the short term of just, hey, get that done until a larger scale rework could be done, kind of a quality of life change before the bigger change. But to me, I think commanders should be more changed up into tech trees and make it more like a Borderlands S style. Or, you know, I don't, I'm not exactly a big fan of the PC versions one, but to me here, I think there's a lot of things that you could really do where you almost have like a level one, level two, level three. I'll put up something from Warframe. I thought that one was really great where you can unlock all these base skills. So let's say you'd have APCS one, APCS one would have a third of the effect and you could then over time as you rank up, put more points into it or even you know, let's say every four levels, it goes from APCS 1 to now APCS 2 or APCS 3. That way you eventually get the full effect, but you occasionally get little buffs here and there. So it's not so much, oh, I got to unlock these tiers more of, hey, maybe you unlock them in batches and then they aren't fully capable until you reach a particular level on that commander. Also, specifically something that definitely a lot of other games have moved to is making these level ups really quick. 
and then making it so that basically, you know, let's say commanders can get up to level 60, but these last few skills here cost like eight points. So getting a point every tier, you're, you're feeling like you're leveling faster, but it still takes the same amount of time. It gives that different feeling. So if you can work that into a commander rework, I'd highly suggest looking at stuff like Warframe or looking at, you know, any other RTS games, heck even Apex Legends has a little tech tree for each one of their uh, legends and stuff. I think that would be really good uh, change up in the overall rework. But yeah, there, there's some rework that needs to happen with a lot of these commanders. I think there's some great unique skills. I think most legendary commanders should have six cents as base, and then all of them should have at least one unique skill. But that, of course, is a lot of work, and I understand. But you know, shooting for the moon here. So hopefully. We can eventually get a commander rework of some kind and I, I would love to see it more of like that warframe style where you unlock one thing at a time and then you bump it and upgrade it over time while you get further points down the line to make it the best skill that you want so and that is all for me today i hope this video helps you in your long grind <laughs> to get your commander up to top level i have multiple to deal with right now so trust me i'm right there with you it's uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a tough one it is i completely understand of course let me know in the comment section down below how exactly you would rework commanders there's a lot of thoughts in the community and a lot of interesting ideas that could come up with it so hopefully wargaming is listening thank you all again for watching if you enjoyed the video tap that like button and subscribe if you haven't hit that notification bell for alerts whenever i go live or a new video releases i have one link to rule them all down below in the description if you want to watch on any other streaming platform, join up on Discord, and much more. Special shout out to the, my Patreon member. That special shout out to my Patreon members and Super Chat supporters. Thank you all for the continued support. Hope you all enjoyed today's video. Peace.